In this video we're going to look at break-even analysis and we're going to complete example one. And when you're doing break-even analysis, basically you're looking at like a business and you're looking at the income and you're also looking at the expenses. So let's just get right into the example. It says Jane buys and sells t-shirts. Dot point one says that she sells the t-shirts for $30 each. Dot point two says that the cost of buying the t-shirts is $10, but Jane also has to budget other costs, such as rent and bills. And this all comes to a total of $800 per week. Looking at question A, it says create two equations. And these equations are going to represent each dot point above. So an equation for dot point one and an equation for dot point two. It says represent the number of t-shirts manufactured as the pronumeral n, represent the weekly income received from selling the t-shirt as t-shirts as i, and represent the weekly cost as c. So we'll do equation one on the left, and we'll do equation two on the right. And it's really helpful to put down a table of values. In the top row, we're going to write N because N is supposed to represent the number of t-shirts manufactured. And we're going to do that for both equations. The bottom row is going to be different for both of them. If we look at dot point one or equation one, it's talking about an income. It's talking about the money they make from selling t-shirts. And we're told that we're supposed to represent the weekly income received from selling t-shirts as I, I for income. So that's going to be the bottom row for equation one. For equation two, we're actually talking about cost. We're talking about the cost of buying t-shirts as well as the cost for rent and other bills. And we're told to use C for cost. So for equation two, we're going to have a different pronumeral in the second row. Now what values are we going to pick for n? I know I definitely want to start with zero because I want to see what happens when I sell zero t-shirts. I also want to figure out what the gradient's going to be. So to help me with that, I'm going to start by going up by one. So I'll go zero, one, two. But I really want to skip ahead to a much higher number. It's going to really help me with drawing the graph. And I think I'll pick 100. I'll see what happens when I sell 100 t-shirts. So for equation 1, which is dot point 1, we get $30 for each t-shirt sold. So if I sell 0 t-shirts, I get $0. 1 t-shirt, I get $30. 2 t-shirts, I get $60. Now if I sell 100 t-shirts at $30 each, I'll get $3,000. Let's now look at equation two, which is talking about cost. It costs me $10 per t-shirts made. Now, if I don't make any t-shirts, I still get charged the $800 for rent and other bills. So we'll start there. We've got a cost of $800. If I only make one t-shirt, that's only $10, but I've got to add on the $800 in expenses as well. So we go to 810, then 820. And finally, if I sell 100 t-shirts at a cost of $10 each, that's $1,000 plus the $800 in, week in rent and bills. So that comes out to $1,800 in costs if I sell 100 t-shirts. Already I can see that if I sell 100 t-shirts, I'm going to make a profit. But if I sell only two t-shirts or one or zero t-shirts, I'm actually going to lose quite a lot of money because my costs will be more than my income. And that's basically what break-even analysis is about. It's about trying to figure out at what point do you start making money? At what point is your income more than your cost? Now I need to come up with two equations. So I'll use the gradient intercept formula, y equals mx plus b. I'm going to do this for both equations. Looking at equation one, 
we see that when n is 0, i is 0. So our y-intercept, or in this case our i-intercept, will be 0. Which goes in place of b. b becomes 0. We're going to add 0 here. We'll copy down the x, and we'll copy down the y. And we'll figure out what m is. y and x will change, but we'll worry about that later. m is our gradient. And all we need to do is figure out what are we going up by each time. And if you're, going, if you're using this method, you've got to make sure that our top row is only going up by ones. So these numbers are going up by ones, and these numbers are going up by 30. And that is what our gradient is going to be. Our gradient is going to be 30. And that sounds right, because 30 is what we are selling each t-shirt for. So that's going to be our gradient. Also, we need to replace the y and the x. x is usually the top row, and x is now n. So I'm going to replace the x with n. It becomes 30n. And y is usually my bottom row, which in this case is i. So I'm going to replace the y with an i. And I really don't have to put the plus 0 in. So this is my new equation, i equals 30n. That's my income. Let's now look at our cost starting with our y-intercept, or in this case, y is c, so our c-intercept, when we sell zero t-shirts, or when n equals zero, c equals 800. So that's going to be our c-intercept, or what we usually know as our y-intercept. So we're going to plus 800. We'll copy down the x again, we'll copy down the y. m is our gradient, so we need to figure out what that is. And if the top row is going up by one at a time, which it is for the first two, then our gradient will be whatever the bottom row is going up by. It's going up by 10 each time. So that's our gradient. And that makes a lot of sense because our t-shirts are selling for $10 each. That's our gradient. And we've got this $800 a week expense when we no matter how many t-shirts we sell. So that's going to be kind of like our y-intercept. Once again, we need to replace the y and the x with the appropriate pronumeral. x is going to be n, and y is going to be capital C, because y is usually the bottom row, and this time it's C. So we've got our two equations now. We've also got some more questions to do. Questions B, C, D, E, and F. Quite a lot this time. So we'll look at question B, and what we're going to do is we're going to graph the two equations on the same number plane. And what's really useful here is we've already come up with a table of values and some equations. So we're going to copy them across. They're going to help us out. All right, so we've copied across our table of values and our equations, and we're going to label our axes like so. We want N to be our horizontal axis because n is our top row. And our vertical axis is going to represent two different things. It's going to represent our income and also our cost. So I'm not going to label it with an I or a C, but it's not a big deal because both of them are in terms of dollar amounts. In fact, what I could do is label it with the dollar sign. That'll work quite well. And you'll notice we get as high as $3,000. So we really want to go up by lots of 300 and we want n to reach 100 so I think we should go across by 10 so we get to 100. So if we look at equation 1 which is our income equation we see we've got the point 0, 0 so we'll mark that and we'll skip ahead to the point where n is 100 and our income is $3,000. That's right up at the top corner here. And all we need to do is just join these with a straight line. We'll put an arrow to show that it goes on forever. Let's now look at equation two. We'll actually pick a different color. Uh, we'll go with purple. We've got the point where if n is zero, our cost is 800. So we'll label that one. That would be about here. And then if n is 100, our cost is 1800. We can label that point here, and we'll connect these with a straight line. Once again, putting an arrow to show that the graph goes on forever. 
We can see that we have a point of intersection, which I'm sure will come in handy later. Let's now move on to the next slide. We're doing questions C, D and E. Question C says, how much profit is made slash lost when she buys and sells 200 t-shirts in a week? Now, if we look at the graph, we only go as high as 100. But that's okay. If the graph's not going to work, we can use our equations. So I'm just going to copy both of them down and use them to find the income and the cost when you sell 200 t-shirts. So if I sell 200 t-shirts for the income, I'm going to go 30 times 200. And this will come to $6,000. That's how much I will make for, sorry, not how much I'll make, how much income I'll get from selling 200 t-shirts. Let's now look at the cost. We're going to go 10 times N. We've sold 200, so 10 times 200 plus 800. This will come out to $2,800. So we've got an income of six grand and a cost of 2,800. They're asking us how much profit we're going to make. And in order to find profit, we need to subtract the cost from the income. So we're going to go $6,000 minus the cost of $2,800. That comes out to a profit of $3,200. Profit is kind of like money in the pocket. All right, let's now move on to question D. It says, how much profit is made slash lost when she buys and sells 30 t-shirts in a week? And we might be able to do that on the graph. If we look at 30, actually, the problem with the graph is you can't get an exact amount. You can go across, but you're really only kind of guessing. So it is better if we can use the formulas. So we'll do that. We'll just use the formulas that we can already see in question C. So the income is 30N, so we're going to go 30 times N. N is 30 this time, we sold 30 t-shirts, that means our income is going to be $900. Our cost is 10 times N, or 10 times 30, plus 800. That's actually going to work out to $1,100. So our cost is more than our income, meaning we're losing money. Actually, we should have specified that in question C. It asked us how much money we made or lost. So we'll write $3,200 made or $3,200 in profit. Looking at question D, what we're going to do is we're going to take the larger amount of $1,100 and subtract the $900, which comes out to amount of $200. Now it's not $200 profit, it's a loss. So we'll write a $200 loss there. Moving on to question E, it says how many t-shirts must she sell to break even? Now what does break even mean? Break even basically means that your income and your cost are the same, meaning that you have a profit of zero dollars. And this is representative by the point of intersection and we can see that that lines up with selling 40 t-shirts. So for question E, she must sell 40 t-shirts to break even. Now moving on to question F, it says use an algebraic method to find how many t-shirts must be sold to break even. So we've already solved this in question E by looking at the graph. We're going to do this algebraically. So first of all, we'll take the two equations. Here they are here. And for it to break even, our income and cost must equal the same. So I and C must be the same. Now, if this is the case, that means that 30N must also be the same as 10N plus 800. So all we need to do is write, well, 30N would be the same as 10n plus 800 if the income and the cost were the same. So all we need to do is solve this. And we're going to do it, firstly, by subtracting 10n on both sides. This gives us 20n equals 800. And now we can divide both sides by 20. 
and 800 divided 20 comes out to 40, which is what we had before. When you sell 40 t-shirts, you break it even. Anyway, that concludes our video on example one. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.